Hey, good to see you today. I hope that your day is um, off to a good start. We're about halfway through. It's halfway through the week. We're getting through another one. It's great to meet you here. I hope you know. My name is Ginger Gaines Sorelli, and I am the senior pastor at Foundry United Methodist Church. And it is um, good to be with you for a few minutes today. One of the things I've been thinking about uh, the last few days is how moments like the one that we're experiencing right now um, give us the opportunity to get new perspective on things. We're seeing things, we're perceiving things, we're experiencing things in such a different way. And I remember years ago, it was 2000, my sister was diagnosed with cancer and we walked through that journey together and I remember as she came out on the other side and even as she was going through it she was so mindful of how that scary painful disruptive experience of moving uh, through that illness and the treatment sometimes daily treatments were affecting her and giving her a new perspective on her life the things that she learned through that really painful time were important and thankfully she came through that painful time and is still um, with us in this life. But I remember one of the things that she said was how much she had learned to not take things for granted, just simple things. And I've been thinking some about that. Uh, in this moment, what are the things that maybe we took for granted in our normal lives uh, when all of this isolation and um, separation were not happening in this way. What are some of the things that we thought, you know, we didn't really want to do, but now we would give anything to be able to do? I remember too, um, in my very first congregation, there was a wise lay leader who once shared with me a sermon that he remembered and that had, had just always stuck with him. And the core teaching of this sermon was um, the, the pastor said, what, what if we began to think about the things that we always say, oh, I have to do this, and instead shift our perspective slightly to say, oh, I get to do this. I have the opportunity to do this. And I, have, I don't know why that has always struck me and stuck with me. It's just this very simple shift to say, not, I have to stay home today. I have to do stuff that maybe I'm not used to doing today. For me right now, it's I have to learn how to use new technology and preach into a computer on Sundays. What if instead of saying I have to do that, I said instead, I get to learn this new thing. I get to experience what it's like for people who can only connect uh, in this virtual way because of their circumstance. What if I said I get to try new things and to experience new ways of communicating and of expressing myself? Of course, some things right now are not gonna be easy to do that with. Some things are just hard. Um, <laughs> um, and we're never gonna be like, woohoo, I get to do this. But what I wanna encourage us to consider and think about is how in these difficult moments, we might learn a new way of perceiving. And just a simple practice of that slight shift from, oh, I have to do this, to remembering that some of the things that we do, even some things that are hard, can be real gifts if we receive it in that way. Right now, we all are being given opportunities um, for spiritual growth. A another memory comes up for me, one of my interns years ago, I said that to her once, I said, well, you know, this is a great opportunity for spiritual growth. And she said, I don't want any more spiritual growth. I'm done with spiritual growth. And I imagine some of us might be appreciating that right now too, enough already. But. Anyway, I just wanted to offer this, um, this little reflection, invitation, for us to think about um, what it is that we're being invited to learn, the ways we're being invited to grow. 
and hopefully the ways that on the other side of this experience will step back into things that perhaps once um, we took for granted or felt like we didn't want to do and be able to receive and experience those and engage those things with a different perspective. I also, before um, we close today, I wanted to remind you that, of course, we are grow getting near, uh, only days away from entering into Holy Week, which I can't even believe that's where we are at this point. But as we're thinking about how we're holding these days and the things that we um, get to do in these days, perhaps things that we get to do that we might not have time or focus to do in other years, let's, I wanna encourage all of us to be thinking about how we're preparing to enter this Holy Week. One of the things I was thinking about um, specifically related to that is I was um, thinking about the fact that it's been a long time since I have read all the way through one of the gospel stories. And I thought, did you just hear, I have my dog with me today. This is also something that I'm getting to do, um, is to do things like this with my uh, canines snoring in the room. Anyway, um, uh, one of the things that I'm thinking I might try to do this, this year in preparation for, for Holy Week is to kind of spread out over the next number of days between now and Easter um, so many verses or chapters of one of the gospel accounts of Jesus' life and just read through that um, as part of my daily practice so that by Easter I've read one of the whole stories. It's different to read the whole thing together. Um, and so would just invite you maybe to consider that or, or perhaps there's another text or, or another practice that you want to really between now and Easter begin to focus in on so that you can really experience um, those holy days in a different way. Maybe in a way that you'll never experience again because you're never going to be in this, well, let's hope, we're never going to be in this place again at this time. So what is it God is giving us the opportunity to experience right now that we might not experience otherwise? As we get ready for um, this Palm Sunday at Foundry, uh, we're inviting you to take pictures of yourself um, with a leafy branch, if you happen to have, um, it can be real, it can be faux. If you have a yard, you might have yard clippings. Or if you don't have any greenery because you live in a condo in the middle of the city or whatever, um, then if you have a scarf or something that you can wave, we're inviting you to take pictures of that, of you in the act of, of celebration. And we're gonna gather those up. If you post them on your social media saying, uh, with the hashtag, this is how I foundry, um, then we'll gather those together and use them in a video that we're going to use at the beginning of our Palm Sunday worship. So I hope you'll help us really make that um, make that special uh, and send your post your pictures uh, by Friday so that we can include those for Sunday. Again, this is something that we never would have done if we weren't in this situation, and it's going to be kind of fun and interesting. This is something we get to do. Friends, I hope that you are taking good care of yourself. As always, I wanna remind you that you are not alone, that God is with us in this and we are in it together, and that we can do what we can do to reach out and care for one another, to pray for one another, um, and hopefully to receive gifts even now from the wellspring of God's grace, which is always flowing and fueling us for the living of whatever days we're living. I hope you have a deep sense of peace today, and if you don't, that is my prayer for you. Take good care. <laughs>